Hey everyone, welcome back to another Roman Reacts. We are here today to watch another Dead Sound video. This one is continuation of the, his lore series. This one is the Arctic Saurians. So it's going to be continue, going off from episode 2 and like showing like what kind of uh, races there were there there are in the, in, the, in this episode. So yeah, we're going to be giving this a watch, having a go and seeing what it's all about. And uh, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Be sure to uh, leave a comment down below and bring some friends along if, they, if you want to uh, come and watch together. So it would be great if you guys can continue to help support the channel. And just I can't thank you guys enough for, the, for helping me out uh, as, uh, for, for this, this far off. So anyway, enough of me rattling. So I'll go straight into it, shall we? All right, so we got that set, and it's all good. So we got ourselves the backstory and lore behind all this. So I'm very curious as to what we're going to be seeing. So yeah, let's just uh, see what. Is, let's watch it all together, okay? So three, two, one. Hello, my name is David, and this is the second of many lore videos I plan on making covering my Soria animated series. Dun, dun. Soria is a brutal, primordial, dark fantasy world. It's full of dangerous prehistoric wildlife, accursed cultists, pirates, bandits, and numerous warring factions. Survival is the only real goal of most of Soria's inhabitants. In this video, I'll be going over the backstory and lore behind one of the oldest races of Soria, the Arctic Saurians. This is a race of mysterious and ancient, nomadic and secretive hunter-gatherers who live deep within the dangerous, wild lands of Soria. The Arctic Saurians, or Glassy Saurians, evolved in the far north of Sauria. Here. Because of the colder habitats they originated from, the Glassy Saurians have adapted many superficially mammalian traits. Features like fleshier faces with bigger noses, and hairier bodies with beards and eyebrows. The Arctic Saurians are among the most ancient of the Saurian races. But despite this long history, they are, and have always been, fairly humble people. The race live in tiny family groups, usually only consisting of a mating pair and their children, living hunter-gatherer lifestyles deep within the wilderness, the more untouched and remote the bear. They may have originated in the far north of Soria, but this race was once widespread across the entire region when the land was far wilder than it is now. With the wilds shrinking as other Saurian factions have appeared and disappeared, moved in, moved out, fought each other and gone extinct, being such reclusive people who prefer to live in untouched wilderness, what remains of the Arctic Saurian people have been pushed all the way back to their Arctic homelands. Ow. <sighs> this race is most well known for their incredibly long lifespans. Most individuals left in the wild now being around 350 years old. There is a legend, a very, very popular legend widespread across all of Soria that the most ancient of the Arctic Saurians is so impossibly old that they conversed with the legendary forefathers themselves. The forefathers being a mysterious and now long dead empire whose ruins are strewn all across the land of Soria. If true, this individual would have to be a staggering 5,000 years of age. Due to their secretiveness and rarity, most Saurian factions doubt the very existence of this race. Just fairy tales of ancient, humble, elusive people, secretive and impossibly old observers that have watched the continent split, they've watched mountains clash, and they've watched entire empires rise and fall 
and rise again. In folktale, the Arctic Saurians have many names, names like the Ice Keepers and the Eyes in the Mountains. Being on the brink of extinction, it is very possible that this whole faction will disappear, leaving nothing more than stories, myths, and legends behind. The Arctic Saurians, unlike most other Saurian races, do not really belong to a larger collective named clan, as they don't cross paths often enough to form much of a collective culture beyond a few basic but very strong shared beliefs. Forgive me, Maya, for this needed sin. Arctic Saurians believe in an all-powerful nature goddess usually referred to as the Great Maya, Mother of Soria. They're not the only Saurians to believe in this god, but given their lifestyles, this belief in Mother Nature as a very real force affects the Arctic Saurians' way of life more than most. Arctic Saurians also have a collective fascination with the Helix. And this specific spiral motif is shared across almost all of these otherwise isolated families. To these Saurians, this spiral pattern represents the endless cycles of nature, the, the changing seasons, life and death, everything that matters to them. Life and death, the everlasting helix, all as one. The horns adorned on the Arctic Saurians are one of many naturally occurring helixes, which may explain how the motif has spread across so many families who haven't crossed paths in centuries. The Arctic Saurians are a relatively peaceful people who have no aspirations of conquering other races, starting or stopping wars, or even drastically changing the land around them. They simply wish to live in harmony with the wilderness, as they have done for thousands of years. Their current goal is mostly just to survive during this turbulent time. The recent Blue Song invasion into Soria's wilds has been especially difficult for them. As the Blue Song expand, they're unwittingly pushing these small Arctic Saurian family groups further and further apart. Those who do still live are very, very old. These Saurians were already a very vulnerable race due to their reclusiveness, but are now nearly extinct. Man. The Blue Song Empire are amid an invasion of mainland Soria as they attempt to conquer and tame these wild lands. They are following in the footsteps of the forefathers who seemingly conquered this wild place thousands of years ago before mysteriously disappearing. One of the very first things the Blue Song Empire did after crossing the Inland Sea was investigate the rumours and myths of the legendary Eyes in the Mountains, the Arctic Saurians. With the very oldest of the Arctic Saurians believed to be thousands and thousands of years old, they may have insight into what happened to the ancient forefathers. The Blue Song almost worship these long-dead people, but still, no one knows what happened to them. The entire Blue Song Empire is built upon the foundations of this mysterious and ruined dynasty, and the Arctic Saurians are the only people left who may have some answers. I must. 
No more. No less. And I pray that this child of yours may see you once again. Helionix is a pretty typical example of an Arctic Saurian. A mostly peaceful, reclusive, nomadic hunter-gatherer living deep within the wilds. He has a respect for the natural world around him, its beauty, and its harshness, he is a believer of the great Maya, mother of Soria, and he is very, very old. Most Arctic Saurians flee from the expanding reach of the other Saurian factions in an effort to avoid attention. But Helionix has started to take an active part in defending his territory from invaders. He keeps an eye on the Blue Song patrols, he kills any poachers that may enter his domain, and he even aids the animals that have been affected by these invading threats. Healing well, I see. Good. Good. Helionix's father though dead, is of note because he may have been the inspiration for the legend of a 5,000-year-old Arctic Saurian. Though his father wasn't quite that old, he still had a tremendous fascination with the forefathers, and more knowledge than most, possibly passed down by his own father, or perhaps grandfather. The Blue Song know this, and they actively patrol Soria's north, looking for the descendants of this family. Though Helionix once had a family of his own, a partner and a child, they are both now dead. His partner killed in a fight with kindred poachers, and his son killed by a hunting Smilodon. <laughs> It was the final loss of his son that pushed Helionix to lose all faith in how he lives and what he believes. All of his morals and principles began to disintegrate as grief, anger, and hate consumed him. The very natural world he reveres and defends has taken the last thing he had. Eventually, giving in to his torment, Helionix made the perilous journey up to Mount Mortalis, an ancient and evil temple, a place built by the forefathers, an accursed place of death and unending suffering. Deep within the halls of Mount Mortalis, Helionix comes face to face with the very animal that killed his son. <laughs> Losing himself completely, he kills the creature, not to give life, not for food, not for balance, but out of rage, for revenge. The Smilodon was a mother, a parent, just like himself. She was simply hunting to provide for her cub, survival, balance, living by the rules of nature, not a villain but an animal, simply trying to survive. No, 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 please, I'm sorry, I don't blame you, I don't, no, I don't blame you, please, please, no, 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 no. please, please, no, no. Forced to confront how lost he has become, Helionix breaks down, promising to take care of the cub, to restore the natural balance, and begging the great Maya to forgive his sins. He swears he will redeem himself. And that's it. That's pretty much all I have written down for the Arctic Saurians so far. If you'd like to read the full sketchbook I've been showing off in this video and scour my notes for yourself for anything I may have missed, the full sketchbook is available right now on my Patreon page. 
please consider supporting this series and giving it a read if you want. In the meantime, super special thanks to all my top Patreon supporters on screen right now. Without these guys, I would not be able to do any of this. I wouldn't be able to do what I do. Thanks again. Bye, guys. That's amazing. Just... Just having the little nuance, to, to have that little, like, understanding, uh, a little, just a little bit here. You, when you watch it yourself, when you watch the vid film yourself, you're trying to piece together what you are seeing and, and trying to understand how it all co comes together, how it all fits. And then when you watch how the grief of the of Helionix um, over his loss of his family and son, you you just see the uh, father breaking down, and you he lo like basically lost everything. And now he, what's what's the point of living basically without um, someone to car carry on his traditions basically? And it's it would break anyone to to lose a child and. Uh, and no parent should ever bear, have to bury their child, and that's just a tragedy right there. But here, getting more explanations about the lore of, of, of his people, the Arctic Saurians, and just being able to understand, like, they were once prosperous and, and numerous, and then they dwindled to such an extent because of the advance of the Blue Song. And now just it begs the question of, like, are there others still out there, st still surviving somewhere, or is he the only one left or something else we just don't know and and yeah it's it's just crazy to me how how this um has come together so props to props to him for them for making this this is just this is just amazing lore just being able to understand more and more of this the in-depth things that are happening in in soria and just it i i just can't thank thank uh, david enough for making this so anyway that's it for me, guys. Hope you enjoyed. I'll be sure to leave a thing for for his channel for you guys to look at, uh, be able to sub to him as well, and some random bits and bobs over here as well. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe. Hope you enjoyed what I have been reacting to, and I'll catch you in the next one, okay? So as always, thanks for watching. Romans, salute.